Hello, Rob here, and welcome to R&B Reviews. It's great to be back with you guys once again reviewing movies, and today I'm going to fulfill a request. Some time ago, a viewer by the name of That Blender Guy asked me if I could review a movie called Grand Prix by director John Frankenheimer. Uh, the movie won three Oscars, and I said, well, let's see what I can do about it. Um, now, I had never heard of this movie before, and I had no idea what it was about other than it must have had to do with um, you know, car racing. So um, I did see that it had an international cast, and uh, including James Gardner, Eva St. Marie, Adolfo Celli, and I'm probably going to butcher his name and I apologize, Yves Monton, and um, Jessica Walter, Brian Bedford, and again, I'm probably butchering his name too, uh, Toshiro Mifune. And uh, I did find a copy of this movie at my local library, and Grand Prix is a 1966 sports drama directed by John Frankenheimer. It's known for its unique racing cinematography, and it's one of the main draws of the film. And at the 39th Academy Awards, it did win um, Oscars, as I mentioned, for Best Sound, Best Film Editing, and Best Sound Effects. John Frankenheimer was uh, nominated for Outstanding Directing by the Directors Guild of America, and after watching it, I was not surprised at all. The movie reminded me of the 1932 movie Grand Hotel because it has several stories that kind of follow all these characters and their personal dramas, but they all interact and connect with each other at various points. James Garner plays an American racer who is fired from his team and is trying to find a way to keep racing. Brian Bedford plays Scott, who is always trying to live up to his deceased older brother, who was also a successful racer, and unfortunately he's recovering from an accident from a race. Jean-Pierre, played by Montan, is a humble uh, person, and his character is getting older, and he's tired of racing, and is starting to see the absurdity in it. And also how audiences want to see crashes and death. And I think out of all the characters, he was the one that I kind of felt like I cared for the most and connected with the most. There is also a showy driver named Nino, played by Antonio Sabato. Now, I thought the acting was good for the most part, although I thought some of the minor characters like Nino's girlfriend was kind of one-dimensional. The movie must have looked fantastic on the big screen. The opening montage, which is made of split screens designed by Saul Bass, are made up of cars, pipes, and wheels as well as other drivers hands and feet i mean this style would be used later with the woodstock documentary i really like the camera work especially the cameras that are over uh, you know the overhead shots from the sky race movies used to do up to this point is that they would record it um, the cars going normally and then speed it up in the edit here the director decided he wanted the cars to you know race like they normally would with the fast pace. And it's amazing they were able to do that by showing the drivers like they would normally do in a race and just had the cameras like right next to them. It was amazing. Um, I like the voiceovers of the drivers in the beginning of the movie because each driver says why they participate in races and what it means to them as well as their fears. It's done almost in a documentary style to get us, the viewers, to know these characters. I think a group of voiceovers helped somebody like me who knows nothing about cars and racing a lot. I really love the dialogue of this movie. The conversations the characters have say so much about them without it sounding obvious and you think about what they are saying without the, you know about themselves. For example, Jessica Walters is uh, Brian Bedford's wife in the movie and she has this monologue where she's talking to her husband about um, how after he gets into an accident during a race about how he is trying to better be better than his deceased brother who was also a successful racer. There's also great attention to details about uh, car racing to personal moments such as when Scott returns home and he sees his deceased brother's room with trophies untouched all over showing how he feels he is still his competition. When it comes to the climactic final race, all these characters have something at stake. I liked how the movie built these characters up to this particular moment. It is during this last race we get a montage of the drivers driving and on the other side of the screen we see a bit showing what they're thinking and what they're afraid of when they race. Uh, for a movie that's almost three hours long, I thought it moved at a very good pace and um, I felt very involved in the story. I'm not sure if this is a movie that I would watch often, but I think if you like movies with strong, sharp characters or even racing movies in general, I think it's worth a look. 
So that's my review of Grand Prix. Um, if you have seen this movie, you know, put your comment in the comment box below. Let me know what you thought of it. And if you're interested, check out some other movie reviews of movies you can watch in the comforts of your own home or maybe at your local movie theater. And please hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell notification for every time I upload a video, you'll be notified that it's available for you to watch. Thank you very much for watching.